It's no secret that there are a lot of steps throughout the solar installation process that require proper planning and execution. And while it's easy to observe and appreciate many aspects of a well laid out solar array, seeing how all those panels are wired together is something most people never experience. Which is unfortunate, because good string design is something that shouldn't be overlooked. So today, we're flipping the script and giving solar wire management the spotlight. Mark Guys will be discussing the benefits of strategically planning out your module wiring when installing a rayless, direct attached solar array with the PV kit. Then, in part two, we'll take a look at some example methods for laying out your wiring on a module level to make preparation and installation of your panels a snap. Let's throw it over to Mark in the studio. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, welcome all you millions of viewers to today's installment of S5's video training. Today is going to be about wire management when installing railless direct attached solar on metal roofs using our PV kit. We have out there already other videos and webinars that show the mechanical installation of our PV kit. How much it saves money, how great it is, less material, no rails on the roof. Today the emphasis is going to be on wire management. What we're going to do that's kind of unique is we're going to actually install the system on this roof, but we're going to install it upside down so you can really see that. So you can see where the wires go, how they click together, and you can see the, sort of that bigger picture. So the emphasis today is going to be on string design and, and the benefits of being strategic in designing the string layout and how that impacts the installation. And then that translates into the module level, how the wires are configured module by module as you sequence up a roof. So before we get into it, let's just talk about some of the things that you may need. A lot of you installers already know this, but let, it's good to review anyway. So um, we will be making jumpers, so you need conductor wires um, and jumper wires, and we'll also be talking about our home run, so you'll need this. A big part of wire management without rails is to use clips. Using plenty of them is a good idea. Get the wires up off the roof and are really important in what we'll be doing. You see a lot out there, you see people using zip ties. You see that with rails and with other things. We're, we're not going to focus on rail zip ties today. We're going to be just really focusing on using these clips. These are more durable and it gives you the flexibility of putting them anywhere on a module. So this is what we'll use today. So let's start talking about string design. And now that I have my handy dandy laptop, let's look at a few images before we go any further. There's a lot of value in um, strategically designing the, your string layout. And the emphasis should be on how do I minimize jumper length as well, how do I provide access of my string ends as close to the perimeter as possible, which just makes things easier to connect into and for the installation itself. And the image on the left is really a basic array with 25 strings, everything's sequential. So if you just look, if you focus on the pluses and minuses, which are your string ends, all those have to be routed down to the home run. Whether you have rails or not, there's a lot of clipping up, you know, it's somewhat disorganized. The image on the right is there's a little bit of thought put into putting those strings in locations where the string ends are closer to the home run and it's just more organized, as you can see. The next image is really what I would call the nirvana of string designs. It's created in a way that the row size is exactly half of a string. So there's strings of 16, there's rows of eight, so that every, every string goes down and back. All the string ends are accessible on that perimeter, on that, in that aisle that we created, so you can connect to your jumpers and run those jumpers and tuck them underneath your home run. On the right as well, there's a lot of thought into putting the strings in, in a position where you have down and back, where you, so your string ends are at the, at the perimeter. And so, th you know, this is really the perfect world as far as uh, of, of minimizing jumpers, having access to your string ends um, for your installation. Another way that you might want to do this is instead of having to have an aisle, you could, put, you could put wire trays underneath the modules. And with a metal roof, you can do that. In mean, between the seams, you could run a wire tray or some kind of um, conduits underneath the modules where you can bring your string ends across, as seen in this image, and you can just put them into the wire tray and then they go right to your home run. So you really, it really saves a lot of time and clipping up and everything. So there's various tools that you could, initiate, you could utilize to make things easier, and it's more critical with a rail-less system. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few basic building blocks that get you in that direction. The first one is, as you'll see in the image, is designing your column and reconcile it with an inverter so that every column length, so the number of modules in a column or row, match up with your string size. So that 
every column is a string. And what you need to do is on the end that you don't want opposite your home run, you're going to have to run what we call a pass through or a pull through. And that allows them to, you know, connect that pull through at the bottom to, that, to the end of your string. And then as you're building the, the array, building that column, you just clip up the, that pass through wire and you end up with that on your end in your home run. So it's really a good way to go. Another one that we'll talk about is having a column or row exactly half of your string size. So that's been in the earlier pictures I showed where you have, so your string basically goes down and back. At the bottom, the two modules are connected together. And then at the other end uh, where your home run is, you just have, you naturally have your two string ends. And it's really a, a good way to go as well as far as just being strategic in your design. So what does that all mean? Now, uh, now I want to get to the module level. And as I said before, it's very important to plan your module wiring and then prep the modules uh, on the ground or on the staging area before you install them. The picture on the left is a really well-designed um, organization of your wires. So they're clipped up out of the way and the ends of the conductor ends are exactly where you need them to be. So when you're installing the next module, the ends are right next to each other. So they just can be clipped together and you're done. What's hard on systems like our system that are pretty low profile or any really low profile system, it just takes time if you're underneath, reaching underneath a module and digging around. And so what we're trying to do is avoid all that by planning with strategic string design, as I said, as well as planning the module wiring and prepping those modules in the proper way. And one thing that's important about that is when you're sequencing, you have to build them in sequence, you have to bring them up on the roof in the right sequence. But if you can master that and, and incorporate that into your process, it really saves a ton of time up on the roof. And when you're trying to sort out exactly how the, my orientation of my wire should be on a module, um, the companies that I've seen do this that are very successful, what they end up doing is they spend a day um, in their warehouse and they actually mock up samples, take pictures of them, and figure out, okay, if I need uh, uh, two ends exactly parallel to each other for the fit or around the corner, um, this is what it's gonna look like. We, let's figure it out now here, take a picture of it. So then when you're on the installation, you have images, people could be, can do what you need them to, to do ahead of time. All right, so now let's uh, get our installers out here and we'll um, dive into the demo. That's all the time we have for today, but there's still more of this subject to cover. Next time, we'll walk you through some of the different ways to lay out your module wires to make installation time on the roof quick and easy. Hit subscribe and ring the bell to catch that video as soon as we post it. Thanks for watching, everyone.